Imagine we found an element that can light up all of New York City, with only a small amount. Yeah, that must be some powerful finding, right? Well, China may have uncovered a mineral on the moon that unlocks endless energy, and what they found might be worth up to 1.5 quadrillion dollars. China is now the third country after the United States of America and Russia to discover a new moon mineral. And this one contains an ingredient that could one day power effective nuclear fusion. The gold standard for nearly endless clean energy. This is about to get real nerdy guys, so keep up. Can China's discoveries and plans solve the world's energy dilemma? Sure, it'd be nice to just hop on a rocket, travel to the moon, and find out all the mysteries it has to offer, but obviously we can't. So for now, the majority of the moon's surface is a mystery to human researchers. With every new discovery, we learn something extremely profound. With this recent discovery, governments may have just found a new motivation to travel to the moon. You guys think we'll ever have an easy access to the moon? Anyway, for some time now, researchers in the scientific community have been looking for ways to generate an infinite supply of energy. If they can determine what components make up this moon crystal and then recreate those components, it may be possible for humans to generate power without burning fossil fuels, which would significantly reduce pollution. Crystals that form spontaneously and are composed of different elements are called minerals. There are over 5,000 different types of minerals that are available on Earth, such as ice, silicon, and diamond. Many of the minerals found on Earth have also been discovered on the moon. However, only a small number of previously unknown minerals have been found on the moon. The United States of America and the former Soviet Union have found five moon minerals. And the International Mineralogical Association has now acknowledged that the China National Space Administration has found a sixth moon mineral. The name of this new mineral is Change Site Y. The Chang'e 5 mission of the Chinese National Space Administration landed on the moon on December 2020, retrieved 3.8 pounds of lunar material, and brought the samples back to Earth. This event was the first successful collection of moon material since the 1970s. The Chang'e 5 spacecraft, named after the Chinese moon goddess Chang'e, began its mission on the moon on November 23, 2020, as part of the Chinese Lunar Exploration Program. And this is the fifth lunar exploration mission for the program. It is also the first mission of its kind for China to return lunar samples. A team from the Beijing Research Institute of Uranium Geology controlled the isolation of a single particle of Change Site Y from its sample after receiving one of the minor lunar materials distributed by the CNSA to nearly 100 different groups for analysis. The BRIUG team used high-tech processes to separate the new moon material from the more than 14,000 other particles in their sample. This approach was necessary because the particle is only about one-tenth as wide as a human hair. Within this sample, China could only locate a single particle of the colorless mineral that resembles the appearance of a diamond, but is only 10 microns across. Even though the change site is now considered one of the rarest minerals ever discovered, this is not what China found worth 1.5 quadrillion dollars. Instead, China discovered something else that's more valuable than the change site. Helium-3 was seen by China's Chang'e 5 in a lunar bedrock. Helium-3 isn't brand new or anything, scientists on Earth have known about it since 1939. However, we've only found it in minimal quantities, and on top of that, it's costly. Helium is a topic covered by textbooks everywhere. It has an atomic mass of 4 and is the second element in the periodic table with two protons, two neutrons, and two electrons. However, Helium-3, a different kind of helium, has recently made headlines. Helium-3, also written as 3He, is a relatively light isotope of helium with an atomic mass of 3. It has two protons but only one neutron. Helium-3 was first postulated to be authentic in 1934 by Australian nuclear researcher Mark Oliphant. At first, scientists assumed that helium-3 was a radioactive isotope, but astronauts later discovered the element in atmospheric and subterranean helium samples. Helium-3 has more protons than neutrons and is the only stable isotope of any element with a proton excess. Moon soil is rich in this element, which is unusual on Earth, but much sought after for its fusion research. Now, to understand what makes helium-3 such a perfect fuel source for nuclear fusion, we need to put up those glasses because now, to put that into perspective, the entirety of New York City consumes approximately 11,000 megawatts of power every single day, which includes every single house, every single light in Times Square, every single subway car, and everything else it is significant. As a nuclear reaction involving helium-3 and deuterium could theoretically produce almost 165 megawatts of power per gram of helium-3, 
To power the entirety of New York City for an entire day, you need approximately 66 grams of helium-3, and that's it. Similarly, we would only need 25 tons of helium-3 to power the entirety of the United States for a whole year. The best aspect is that when helium-3 is split, it does not produce toxic substances, which means that there is nothing for us to clean up, store, or deal with in any way. On the moon, there are vast stores of helium-3, a light and non-radioactive fusion fuel. On Earth, however, supplies of this fuel are nearly non-existent. Since the moon does not have an atmosphere and has been subjected to the onslaught of solar winds that include helium-3 for billions of years, the moon possesses enormous quantities of the isotope. Since we're discussing actual, genuine clean energy on a global scale, it follows that the moon contains an estimated 1 billion metric tons of helium-3. On the bright side, it is fantastic that people have been able to make such an astounding discovery. On the other hand, the fact that China discovered this information, a country that does not particularly have a lengthy history of, let's say, honesty when it comes to the government, has raised some eyebrows and caused some controversy. China has already asserted that they not only have a method to extract helium-3 from the lunar surface, but also have strategies to extract the isotope and transport it back to Earth on a large scale. China has also stated that they already have a method for extracting helium-2 from the lunar surface, after China disclosed that they have a technique of harvesting helium-3 from the moon's surface. Free trips of the space shuttle may deliver sufficient amounts of fuel to the Earth's human population on an annual basis. It should come as no surprise that the costs associated with constructing a mining operation on the moon are, to put it mildly, enormous. In addition, it would not be a tiny enterprise. The most extraordinary predicted amounts of helium-free in lunar soil are roughly 50 parts per billion, meaning you'd need a substantial quantity to extract it. The China National Space Administration has confirmed that the Chinese government has given its full approval for the future three phases of Phase 4 lunar missions. These launches of spacecraft has begun to start as early as 2024. The research will be conducted at the south pole of the moon by the Chang'e 6, 7, and 8 spacecraft, and construction of the fundamental components of an international lunar research base will get underway simultaneously. When the rest of the world asked China how they planned to attain this goal, China did not respond, which led to the entire transparency issue. We need to keep in mind that China does not own the moon because a significant amount of mining needs to be done to obtain a negligible quantity of helium-3, which is true regardless of whether or not China has a solution for the problems we're facing. Other space organizations are free to conduct their mining missions on the moon and will likely do so to grab their modest share of a market worth $1.5 billion. What is your opinion on China's project? If you've reached it this far, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and press the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future updates. See you in another video. Until then, take care. Do tell us your views in the comments section.